Hello and welcome to Nintendo Voice, your voice for everything Nintendo, recording on the 4th of October 2017. This is episode 109, and joining me today we have Colin Crompton. Hello, yes. Um, no Harrison, there's like a void of Harrison, it seems to be missing. We've got this like really nasty habit going on where it's just like we're doing two-man shows. We are doing two-man shows. I'm usually... Of the two men, though. Um, yes. Despite sometimes being the reason why shows get moved around and such. But here we, sit. Okay. Here we stand. Here we sit. Here we are. Uh, and so we, we've got a cool show today. Um, we It's a Britcast, the one. We were, we were discussing before the show began, uh, before we started recording, before we were live. Uh, we believe this is the first Britcast in video format. I'm very sure it is. Yeah. Yeah, and and this this is what a Britcast looks like. It's 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 the same show without Harrison, but the uh, the other two are here. Don't give it away. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but it, that that fact does make this this show one hundred percent British. There it we does. Go. That's, yeah. that's I feel awesome. like I should have a cup of tea and a British flag behind me, but alas, I don't imagine have that. that. Imagine if we both just turned up. <laughs> Flags are blazing. Yeah. Yeah. On today's show, we do have some what we've been playing. We got some new games here. We have got some old games. We've got the Nintendo news, and we've also got a super topic to discuss. Um, but before we begin, um, I got a box. Oh. I got a box. Oh. I got a box. It's, um, a, it's a cardboard box. It is a cardboard box. We're going to be very descriptive here. Oh, um, so as part of this, uh, what we've been doing now for, I guess it's been a couple of months now, mm. uh, we started Patreon, um, and to help kick start it, as it were, uh, we've been doing a little competition, and that has been uh, a chance to win a Super Nintendo Mini, Super Nintendo Classic, uh, and it has arrived. Uh, <gasps> And so what we're going to do, I'm, I'm going to open up here for the first time. I've, I've made a, a, a slight appearing to make the job slightly easier. Awesome. Um, I, I was going to say, I you, actually are, are you actually sure it's Nintendo Mini inside? I hope so. <laughs> open I up. Really like... do. Oh, no, I, I, I can't be showing that. No, that's the problem. Oh. Um, but there's still, there's still a little bit of time. Mm. Um, um, it seems a shame to do the great grand um, giveaway on a on a simple Britcast, uh, and so we'll do that next week. Which means there is another week to enter. Bonus week, and here, and here it is. If you see in the video, you can see it here. Brand new sealed unit. Um, awesome. Okay, Twenty plus one games. Plus what, one. What could that possibly mean? Well, um, twenty-one. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Why didn't they? Oh, oh well. Uh, but yeah, we've got a Super Nintendo Classic Mini. If you want to be in a chance of winning it, all you need to do is help support us on Patreon. Yeah. Uh, if you go to patreon.com forward slash Nintendo Voice, um, chuck us on the minimum a dollar a month. Uh, and that's, a week. Well, that's the minimum you can, really. Uh, and we're next week on the next show, episode 110. Um, makes it sort of a rounded number as well. Nice round, yep. We'll pick a number out of the hat. If it's you, simple as that. You win this. The, the best thing about this is for American listeners and um, viewers. Yeah. This is the European Super Nintendo. The British which, one, we could, should say. Very, very true. But I, I feel like. <laughs> Not exclusively, but it is, yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, but many would argue it looks better than the North American. Yeah, you, you may call us biased, but I'm, I think. Uh, do you, do you I, agree, Colin? Could you get the better one? I absolutely. I'm not, wasn't never a fan of the, the purple like switches, the tabs on the American yeah. uh, Super Nintendo. But I mean, it's 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 still the same system. Quite small box, really. Yeah. Little mini system. It's a scale. There's a switch. <laughs> wider. Any excuse for Lewis to put his switch on camera, <laughs> he will take. It doesn't have yellow Joy Cons on. So. True. Oh, dear. What? The battery died on one of them. 
How did that happen? <gasps> yeah, how does that happen? Exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a predicament I felt. Well, oh, I put the gremlin. Hmm. The yellows will charge in time. Yep. They'll get there. It'll be okay. catch up. <laughs> However, let's jump straight into some what we've been playing. And Colin. Yes. I uh, <laughs> well quite interesting. I've been I um I was away last week. Okay. And because uh, I had no internet. But a uh, week before I had no internet, I started playing Banjo Kazooie. You know, as, as, as a stream thing. Yeah. Um, now, Banjo Kazooie is still. I mean, I've I've only played it recently, but it is still one of the absolute premium 3D platform games. Hmm. Absolutely, without a doubt, it deserves every bit of praise it gets. Um, I did find a few issues with it though, in two main areas. One sure. which I don't think gets talked about enough, but the camera system in Banjo Kazooie is really bad. It's. I mean, I know it's an early 3D platform game, so it's something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, cause my first immediate comparison is Mario 64. It yes, and it's pretty much the same system. Okay. And that's the problem. The camera is segmented into pre-fixed locations. It's not a freeform camera, so there's a, there's so many blind jumps you have to take because you can't get the camera around. And it's impressive for like you know the precise angle you need exactly were. because it's super 64 they explain it because they show Lakitu with the camera yeah. going merry around so you can't move through like walls and stuff they stop you the same thing happens in Banjo Kazooie that a wall will physically stop the camera and it's like but I need just a few more <laughs> so I can get like a clear line to jump from that doesn't happen and so as many jumps are like awkward at this sort of weird angle um my second major issue was the final boss. Okay. It has a it has a horrific final boss <laughs> because so you fight run team for like segments, four sections, and each section you got to hit her four times. It's like a rule of four, which is kind of unusual. Usually it's a rule of three, yeah. um, and it goes on for ages, absolute mm -hmm. ages. It's like. It, and the worst thing is, is you you got to do the whole thing on, on one life bar, like was that six honeycombs? I think it's the max. And mm -hmm. she drops one honeycomb at the end of each segment, yeah. which is that, that's it. That's, that's all the health you get. Uh, in between that, though, you also need eggs, and you need feathers. <laughs> and if you die, the game doesn't give you back the eggs and feathers that you used. You have to go and collect them again. Yeah. And you have to start the whole boss battle again. And it's like, oh, it's so infuriating. It's like, can I, can not, like, can it not be like a checkpoint system in, in between each segment, you know? But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's still a fantastic game. Um, actually, I, I, I'll, I'll ask you this: Can you name how good's your memory of Banjo Kazooie? Depends what sort of questions you've got in mind. I mean, because I'm saying, hey. because I was playing through it, and I was like. I don't remember this level. I remember nothing about it. It's like I saying, maybe, maybe not then, because I mean, I've not, I've not really revisited it at all beyond the actual era. Oh, okay. All right. yeah, so it's it, just, it, I was going to ask you if you can name, not even name, but just like describe every single level of Badger Kazooie, because I want to nah, see, okay. I want to see if you missed the same level that I did going through. Because I was like, oh, so there's Mumbo's Mountain, which is like the very first level, Treasure Trove Cove. Um, the Gobi Desert one, Mad Monster Mansion, and then like Click Clockwood, mm. and then the Swap. There's also a Swap level, and I thought that was it. But there's one level where it's like all based on a boat, and I'm like, I don't mm. remember. I don't remember this level being in the game. And it's like, I can't remember what level's called. That's how forgetful it is. It's just <laughs> gone. But um, so ultimately though, so you played through the whole thing, yeah? Recently? Yes, yes absolutely. So, um, did it meet up to your expectations? It kind of blew the expectations away because I was like, I, I, I assumed I was like, yeah, everyone says it's the greatest because of you know rose tinted you know glasses and all that stuff. Yeah, it's nostalgic. You go back and oh, of course it's good. You know, it's from my time, my era. But no, it really is like amazingly 
it, it feels it still feels somewhat modern you know it was okay. made almost 20 years ago you yeah. know it, it's that's hard to believe that it's almost 20, it's, it's very like close to 20 years old it's like Rare was so ahead of their time, Banjo Kazooie. Mm. It's insane. The, the leap from Super Mario 64 to Banjo is remarkable. Really is. Um, I'm actually kind of excited to go to Banjo Tooie because I've never finished Banjo Tooie. I don't so, think I actually. Uh, mm, I might have to backtrack this statement here. I have touched very <laughs> little of Banjo Tooie. I've I definitely played, played it, but I've never, I've never finished it. So I'm excited for that. Um, the, the second thing is, I. Um, this is not game related, but I went into a, sh- a store, a shop, sure. uh, kind of big shop for local to me, but it, it, they deal with like import goods. And okay. I saw something that caught my eye and I was like, I'm going to pick that up for the podcast because that'd be fun to see what it is. So oh, I have it here. Now, you got my attention. Well, oh. it cost me, for context, 59p. <laughs> <laughs> and there's and it is this oh yeah right. it's a mystery bag i don't know what's inside it uh the only thing it says at the top it's the only bit of english on the entire thing is sweets games and surprises Ooh, and that's it everything else i think the first language is so you're guaranteed at least a couple of sweets yeah and the first language is games it's in spanish no. Well, that that could be the surprise right there. But it's just a little bit I don't know where it's made, but so um, I thought it's inside it. The worrying thing is, it's got air holes, so <laughs> it's something oh. alive in here. Well, we'll find out, but we will see what's inside. Isn't this like different for a podcast format? Uh, um, before, actually, I want to say, before you. I, my, my bet is like it's got nothing, no Nintendo branding at all in this packaging, beyond the cover. There's Nintendo branding, but I don't think they know okay. what games they're talking about. So this is Super Mario. He looks a bit different than what I remember. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. I, I know he's that's like the, the Super Mario unit. <laughs> Super it does Mario. say copyright. It does have copyright Nintendo, two thousand thirteen. Okay. So, is there anything on the back of that? Uh, is that no. what is that one of our games? That poster? Uh, I, <laughs> it might count. I don't know. <laughs> um, what else we got in here? Um, okay, we got some cardboard. Oh, it's like a little pencil wrap thing. A pencil wrap thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, little like cardboard thing you pop out. Pull around your pencils. Nintendo characters on. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. We haven't had any games yet. I'm disappointed. No, well, this could, this this could be like the creme to the creme of games. Um, mm, you, some they, coloring in. Yeah. So we got a <laughs> black and so, white outline picture of the Mario crew to color in. We do. All right. We do. That's. Oh, oh that's that says 2012 Nintendo. So they're covering the years. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, have more, more in there? Uh, no, this is more. Oh, there is English on this. One okay. sentence. <laughs> Brace yourself for this as I drop okay. the package. Um, feel may vary. <laughs> Please retain package for future reference. They are wise, wise words. They are remarkably some which I feel could be part of an episode title. <laughs> I'm that... not just not the some which ones. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. The rest is literally sweets, I think. Oh, now we got oh, yeah, okay. Sweets. Now, this is kind of cool, actually. Yeah, this is kind of worth it. We got some stickers, all right. Yeah, some nice little stickers there. We got some coins. Wait, 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 and... Go on, read them. We need to be descriptive. Oh, for the stickers, we got. We've got a little boo. Yep. We've got Mario and Luigi in a very strange pose. I don't know what provocative, but. Just Luigi, the other kind of strange. Lu- okay. Luigi is clinging on to Mario quite dearly. Okay. They're, they're brothers. They, 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 they are allowed yeah. to do that, I guess. Um, we've got a Koopa Trooper. 
We've got two coins, and then Mario just like hanging out on a block. I don't know if you can see that there. Yeah, he's he's, he's been quite cool on that. And there's What's the that? strange yeah, yeah. Luigi Mario. Yes, <laughs> very very bizarre. And some post-it notes. With a question uh, actual post-it notes. Yeah, that must be the second game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the the games part of this is very disappointing, and that's about it. We you make it there, you? We have a solo show live. Why not? Let's. I think this is a perfect time as any uh, to start talking about what I've been playing, uh, and I've oh. actually picked up a couple of new games. Ah, you're joining us, Colin. Oh, did I drop out? Oh, one of us did. It's hard to tell. Oh, okay. Well, oh, I kept it going, so... That's good. Yeah, well, that, that's, is... that will be an interesting edit, because I tried to do the same myself. We had two sweets. Okay. Yeah, a lollipop. That's about it. Yeah. And I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. Oh, it's we're... Um... Like, very generic. It's kind of like a palm violets, but not... Yeah. That's what I was thinking of, at least. Yeah. Right. Well, there you go. There's a bit of randomness for you. I mean, not random. Was, Random's good. How, how exciting was that? Uh, it was up there. For things which have happened on the show, that would probably also be included in the highlight reel at some point. <laughs> which, <laughs> you mm. can only get this on the Brickcast, folks. You can. I don't know why it's got holes, though. Why did it have holes punched into it? Maybe, maybe some of the food products which can be inside. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but the, they're probably sealed as well. Anyway, should we, talk, should we talk about some games again? Let's talk about the games. That's, that's good. I do. I did like that though. Um, <laughs> I've got some new stuff. Ooh. Uh, re- relatively, at least. Let's start off with the bigger of the two. Okay. End on smaller. So I've picked up Pokémon Tournament DX Ooh. on the Switch. Okay. All right. Having uh, only played, if to give it context, having only played the demo. For oh, I was going to ask you if you played the Wii U. On both the Wii U and on the Switch. Uh, never the full game. But I decided to jump in. Awesome. Uh, and I mean, part of that was because I, I played that demo on the Switch, and I, although it was very similar, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not, it might even be the very same demo, but for whatever reason, it kind of clicked with me more so than it did the first time around. Okay. Uh, and I, I've been having fun with it, which has been really good. Um, it's a little bit different to what I expected. To be honest, in terms of like the actual game modes, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, you you've got Pokemon. I I do own it. The, I do own it for the Wii U. Yes, it's yes. yeah, it's it's, it's I, I love it. I think it's a great game. Yeah, yeah and um, I guess I should probably talk about the the core gameplay and, and feel free to jump in because oh, most yeah. of this stuff um, mm. is the same. Yeah, uh, and so. Uh, the gameplay, um, I was unsure at first about having like these two distinct modes during a battle. Yeah. And so you kind of got your slightly more traditional um, side view, like, kind of Street Fighter esque. Pretty much, yeah. Very uh, and, then you, and then you've got another one, which I'm not sure what the closest comparison is, uh, but you're um, kind of free roaming around the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a long distance. Kind of fighting, yeah. which is, I mean, it's, it's not, not exclusively distance. You can be up close and fight in that mode before it switches over. That's and correct. Of course, it can switch between those two modes. Yep. And at first, I did find that was very jarring. Mm-hmm. But the more I played, the more that so- seems to just kind of happen. It, it does transition quite well between the two. Mm. It's like the game sort of pauses and goes, right, hold on a second. Now, here's the second yeah. part. You know, it's. it's I think the thing I was worried about more so is not just the visual transition, it's like the transition in like me playing in like my headspace. It's like, all right, now the controls are slightly different. Mm. Uh, I was like, mm, I'm not sure I'm going to like it, just like that happening, as it were. Um, no. you know, it, after a while, that becomes absolutely fine. Uh, and it, it's, I notice it, it does make for like these more visually interesting battles. Oh, definitely. Yeah, like, yeah. In, instead of just having this one view the whole time. I kind of feel like that's partially why they did that. So when there's, when there's people are spectating, it has more of a visual flair. You know, yeah. To keep them intrigued. Definitely. And it, it does kind of cover uh, a few different like angles that you know Pokemon are um, 
more Pokemon battles are more known for. So you, you do kind of have the, you know, one on like the bottom left, one on the top right, oh, like, yeah. very traditional. Uh, but you also get some more anime esque views, and of, yeah. you get your just new, more normal kind of side by side, side by side by side view as well. Yeah. And another thing which really impressed me about it is just the kind of the the ridiculous factor. Okay. In terms of like the uh, the powerful attacks. Oh uh, yeah. Just like the style of the characters and like. Um, any guesses who I'm now attempting to main, or at least who I'm just playing the most as? Uh, would it be Pikachu Libre? It is exactly Pikachu Libre. <laughs> because a got what a two foot tall mouse Pokemon doing wrestling moves is the greatest hmm. thing ever. <laughs> it is absolutely <laughs> fantastic, and he takes himself seriously, which makes he it does. Even better. Yeah, like he's, he's like posing like so cool, crosses his arms. <laughs> <laughs> He he he's he special yeah. move. Uh, cracked up every time. He's like jumping on. He jumps yes. on like, the top rope. He's like big at you. It's like just like a basically like a belly flop. And, on top. Yeah, but he like um he gets the uh, the crowd cheering. He's like yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, it's so bizarre. I'm like okay, yeah, yeah. I guess very I think it's awesome. Like the first time that happened, I, I did feel the um. Like the justification of my purchase always immediately. It's like, it's like all right, I, I made a good decision to stay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't seen this before, and now uh, I have. The yeah, airbase ring really fun. Um, um, another thing I want to add is so in terms of like the normal single player progression, mm. I really had no idea. I hadn't looked into it. I hadn't really heard much, and, and so it is, it is a series of tournaments. Yes, um, and they are. You have like these different groupings you have to go through so you, the main one is look, you go for a bunch of battles against uh, other cpu characters you go in like battles of five at a time and so you have to clear the five before it will save your progress mm -hmm. um i've not actually quite worked out uh, like the nitty-gritty of that in terms of like how many times you can get knocked you can lose a fight before you get knocked out of the tournament or do you just keep going to get your rank high enough how many battles are there going on but it essentially boils down to you have a lot of battles against CPUs, yes. uh, and then and then you enter into a a tournament, well, like a, a closing brackets type thing. So Indeed, got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is it like a te ten or a dozen fighters at the end? Um, yeah, it's something around that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so you you go for those tiers. You you know you fight who um, you work about through like the final champion of that. League or whatever. Yeah. 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 And then finally, you have that do the champion itself. Yep. Um, and you have a succession of those, and you get some very small snippets of little story bits after you go mm. through one of those. Very vague um, story bits. I, I assume it's identical as well to what the Wii U kind So of... far, yeah. Because the Wii U, yeah, it sounds interesting. It's like you go through these battles. Have yeah, you... I meant I meant like that little story bit as well. I don't think they changed a the thing. Um, and so I don't think it's supposed to say it re revolves around uh, Shadow Mewtwo. Shadow Mewtwo, yeah. Have yeah. you fought Shadow Mewtwo yet? I have, yeah. I've fought him a couple of times. Uh, how, how, how have you handled Ooh. his battle? Oh, I see. That's a good question. Um, now, I'm not sure if this is spoiler territory or not, but I'm, I'm hoping currently these are fights you can't even win. <laughs> I oh, could right. be wrong here. Am I wrong, Colin? <laughs> you can, can win them. I can you beat him the first time you face him? I'm not sure if you can. I mean, you probably could if you're like a pro at the game, but oh, so that wouldn't break the story. Sort of no, thing. I don't think it would. No. No. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing with it. Um, yeah, Pokemon Tournament's good, uh, and of course, I've been playing it local multiplayer. Um, it's fun there as well. Um, so you do <laughs> actually get the option if you've just got the one system and it's on TV to play either split screen mm -hmm. or in the. I guess the you know the non-split screen view. So one yeah. person has like a slightly different angle, as in um, one person's character will be closer to the screen than the others when it's in that free range mode. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and that's the way we've been playing it so far, and still having a split screen with you know identical cool. cameras to the back when you're in the free free mode. Uh, and that, that's been working quite well. Do, do you have any other favorite characters, or is it just Pikachu Libre? <laughs> it's may, mainly Pikachu Libre currently. I've not. I, I've I've. I think I've tried most characters, but I've probably just used them all between once and twice. Whereas okay. 
again, the way story works or the single player mode works, and I wasn't aware, is that you do just pick a character at the beginning. Yes. And I'm sure you um, you probably can swap them. Can you swap them? Uh, I I think you can, but all the, but, the the levels they've gained, you have to like you know yeah. the training you've done with them. They get to like start from scratch. But yeah, that's if you can at least. It's just in a menu somewhere. It's not like when you start a mode. Oh, who are you no, going to no, be? No. Like most yeah, fun yeah. games, it's just all right. We know what you already this chose. Jump in. This is who you're going to stick with. Yeah. And so I thought uh, I might as well at least stick with one character for a while before I start jumping around. Yeah. It's been a fun one for that. And so the second game I want to, go, want to talk about, and this one won't take long, but it is a very cool game. Um, part of a series that I've been a fan of for a while. Finally oh, landed on the Switch. Um, it was also announced like a week before it came out. Oh, okay. Picross S. Uh, Picross. Picross. It's, it's Picross. Um, oddly, no <laughs> touchscreen functionality. Moving the title. Yeah. But apart from that, um, very good version of Picross. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a, f a few hundred puzzles. Um, it, they seem to go to nice and complex difficulties. And there's there is a new... Um, like a mega Picross puzzle mode where you get these mega blocks, which are blocks which extend across multiple rows. Yeah. Um, um, oh, are, are they not new to this then? Um, they've been in the Pokemon Picross game. Oh, have they? I thought they were just the big boards. No, yeah, no, no sure I think that. it's a separate, like, it, it costs like yeah. a ridiculous amount of, um, what's, what's the currency in that game? It's like, Pokey coin, Pokey uh, crystals, or something. It costs a ridiculous amount of those to unlock the second board. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, well, this was the first time I played it, and mm. yeah, they're, they're, they're real. They're, they're mind benders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got, like, so in this like little block of like, so you got a row of 10, and across two of these like rows of 10, there's like four blocks that need to be filled in, but it could be one on top, three on the bottom, or, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it, it does test your. Like, I always try and say those are the last. Because it's just the yeah. way you have to work it out. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it. Um, but the a mode I'm pretty sure is new, okay. the uh, Picker's S, is multiplayer. Oh. Yeah, there we go. How does that work? That, that's, pretty, that's, pretty, that's, that's pretty much the reaction. Um, with two controllers. Um, yeah. But okay. it's, it's, the same, it's the same game. You get just get two curses. Oh, so okay. You, two people can mark and place and, you know, do what you do in pit cross. Um, your curses can't go through each other, they will bump. Oh, so you have to go, <laughs> they'll clash. Each other if you, if you, if you. <laughs> it works surprisingly well. Oh, um, it was the first I was like, oh. Do you do I how, how do you arrange them? Do you like okay, you tackle the top right corner, I'll, I'll work out the bottom left, and we'll meet no, in the middle. I, I think you just you got to go with the flow, as it were, and that. Um, uh, and it's especially like, um, you'll get to a point in a pit cross puzzle where you're both just stumped, yeah. Um, and then you're you're just both trying to figure out different areas, and then but that, it kind of it did work at least in the the limited experience I've tried it with. It wasn't okay. a complete disaster. Puzzles were cleared. Cool. Fun was had. Um, so is this two D Picross or three D Picross? It is. It's just two D Picross. Okay, good. Yeah, that's I prefer two D. Three D Picross is yeah. kind of just. I love also, I'm not sure, and, and maybe this is part of the decision. Um, but I'm not sure how you would do 3D pit cross without it being exclusively touchscreen based. Yeah, it would be okay. such a weird one to manipulate like, with just digital controls. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Mm. But hey, it's great um, if you like pit cross. Um, it's a good version of it. <laughs> the switch. Cool. Awesome. There we go. Well, that's what you need to know, really. <laughs> Is it a good version? <laughs> yeah. Should we should we cover some Nintendo news? Let's let's throw ourselves at some news and see what happens. First, yes. We we'll launch of the news. Uh, okay, we, we've got a. It's been a little while since we talked about YouTube and Nintendo mm. together. Yes, uh, there's been a little bit of an update on this one. Um, does this affect us? <laughs> That's that is a good question. Does it affect? It us? doesn't. It doesn't. It's the question. No, it doesn't affect us. Um, which is which is interesting. The news story though is that um, Nintendo is essentially uh, if a part of their YouTube created program, which is essentially how, if you want to um, earn money from producing uh, Nintendo content on YouTube, um, yeah. 
the money goes to Nintendo and then they give their cut back to you, essentially. Um, but they are restricting uh, live streams now, which they weren't before. Um, and I'm not sure if this affects content beyond live streams. Um, but yeah, that, that's the, the story, basically. So if you're part of that Nintendo Creators program on YouTube, uh, you're not going to make any money out of any li live stream you do. Well, this, I, I, I feel like this is a very silly move by Nintendo. Um, Nintendo, the creators program, is almost like a vice on ad revenue for the yes. creator. They, they, you know, it takes, it takes a cut of the ad revenue. Streamers don't generally make their money from ad revenue, though. That's the thing. Streamers sure. are generally supported through donations and sponsorships. Nintendo can't control those, so I I feel it, I just kind of feel it's weird to like. Well, we're gonna make you make it so you can't stream, you know. Yeah, or, or maybe maybe that's part of it. Maybe maybe because Nintendo won't be making money there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the yeah. only way to make money there is if there's additional external forces outside of YouTube, which this program can't govern. Maybe. Yeah. They're like, nah, you can't. So yeah, I'm not sure what the exact wording is. It's just if you do the if you do streams, there's no revenue, or you just um, I think somehow if, I, just they say you you don't do. Them. I don't think they can. <laughs> so it waves their finger at you, and it's like no. They, they, they like remove you know they could. They, they probably stop remove you from, from their creators program. program. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which I I still think yeah. the whole creator programs a unnecessary, very unnecessary thing, but. Uh, we've discussed it before, and it's yeah. It, it, it's, why, it's why there's no intro music and on the YouTube. <laughs> it's, it's not the reason, but uh, it's well, a fact. It's definitely a fact. <laughs> we don't want to get flags because they, those. Um, we only did five, or I should say, I only did five uh, when and we were uploading flag, right? the original audio. Um, so the audio only podcast, the first five episodes are on YouTube. They're all flagged. Yeah. Um, so they have ads on them. And this, folks, is why we had to change it up because <laughs> it's like, huh, yeah, it's it's an issue. It's it's annoying because it's anything you do. I mean, I, I've done live streams of various Nintendo games. None of them have flagged yet. And I think the reason for that is because Nintendo can't control that that type of content. I don't think they don't really look out for archives of live streams, and so their way around that is. We'll just make it so they can't live stream. We'll just tell them that they can't That's do it. No. So, I'm sure that the very few streams I did, I'm pretty sure they were all flagged. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> I have to go back and check. I've, I've got, so. got a target on your back. Um, yeah. yeah. I've been fine so far, luckily. But we'll see. We'll see how long that holds out for. But yeah. Maybe you uh, you stay hidden for a little bit longer if you don't have Nintendo in your channel's name. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Next piece of news. Yep. Um, uh, there are no plans for any more Metroid remakes currently. Yeah. Sur That's surprising. Uh, so, I really should find my sources out first. Um, uh, an interview with Sakamoto was involved in. Yes. Um, it really depends on the reasons you have for undertaking such a challenge, whether there's a need for it and your own motivation. But at the moment, I have no plans for another remake. I think we need to spend time considering whether fans are only wanting remakes going forward <laughs> and what that might mean. Yeah, I... Bizarre, bizarre wording. I mean, to be fair, I think the Metroid series has... It's had a lot of remakes in that series. Yes. I mean, the first two games now have been re remade. So is Super Metroid next? Or a full remake? Is that due? That, that, would, that would be the question, which is probably why there was a question. Yeah, I mean, um, it's crazy. But I, I don't know. The only, the only remake I guess people want now is probably a remake of like the Prime trilogy in HD. I can see, but I mean that um, that's that's even if that counts. Yeah, like I could see them doing a HD a five version. Um. But if it's like, for example, I don't call like, and this makes me a bit unfair because I've not actually played it. But from the footage I've seen, like, like Twilight Princess HD, mm -hmm. I wouldn't call a remake. No, it's a um, remaster. Course, it's a re remaster. 
And yeah. so, yeah, I, I could see Nintendo doing, an, you know, a remaster of the Prime trilogy. Um, yeah. But, yeah, if they were to actually remake Prime, I think that could be quite cool. Be interesting. Um, but I don't, like, now doesn't seem to be the right time because 4 was being made. Or That's the right, yeah. But maybe they, they follow that up next with Prime Zero sort of thing. And, it, and then it's actually just a remake of Prime. Um, <laughs> just to confuse <laughs> just everybody. To confuse people. Yeah. Uh, um, yes. Ever since yeah. the slightly tweaked story. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's the same. I, I'm kind of glad. I want. I, I do want new Metroid games. I don't want to keep. You know. I mean, I I haven't played Metroid Two, so I'm glad Samus Returns exists for 3DS. But, yes. Um, we still have it. Oh, as in li- we literally don't have it like we could. That's the thing. If that's what we chose. To. But, but yeah, oh, that's a that's another discussion. <laughs> yeah, terrible. But yeah, I, I, now now Harrison's not on the show, shall we voice our disinterest for Metroid? Yeah, it's a terrible series. No one likes it. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be yelling at us if he watches this. I've always but, um, wondered what the boss was about. <laughs> <laughs> and squishy Metroids. You're so happy with the Metroids. He's weird. Anyway. Um, you just can't trust anyone with an amiibo in hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. But yeah, yeah, I mean... I, I, I yeah, don't I mean, it, see, uh, it also it does make kind of sense in a way because it is like coming off the hills of Samus Returns. Uh, exactly. It would seem a bit too much at this point, like which seems <laughs> odd to say. Um, but knowing we've got Prime Four coming, um, yeah. Samus Returns is coming. If they were saying like, "Yep, um, there's more remakes on the way," um, I guess I guess it's good news. But I feel like um, these sort of things need to be treated with more rever- rever- reverence, as it were. Uh, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and again, if Super Metroid is the next in line, it's like I don't want to see Super Metroid get remade. You know, it's it's, it's a tricky one. Like maybe they yeah. would do the um, um, link between worlds type thing with it. Mm. So maybe they'll go back and make a game. It's like it's style. a new game. But it's heavily based on this old. Yeah, game. so like it might literally be like using the same overworld. Mm. Uh, but it's remixed. There's new enemies. Uh, technically, there's a different story. Um, like it's Samus returning, um, or before, or no, I can't be really returning, can it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it is. Maybe they somehow is like, oh, what's happening? It's here? still there. Why? Why is this here? Uh, <laughs> let's explore. Let's see what's going on. Because um, I mean, like, Super Metroid. I mean, it's not a remake of the first game, obviously, but it, it does follow heavily from the very first Metroid game. Yeah, you know, and so a lot of the same bosses and things like that. So uh, it'd be crazy if they did, but I'm, I'm glad that they've acknowledged, like, okay, there's new, they, well, they've said there's new stuff coming. They're just like, we're not making old stuff anymore. We're going to focus on new things. So that's good. Cool. Yeah. We have one final piece of news here. And it almost seems odd to narrow this out. But we do have somewhat of a surprise release for Stardew Valley on this Nintendo Switch, uh, which is tomorrow, uh, coming yeah. out on the 5th, for historical purposes, the 5th of October 2017, uh, Stardew Valley is coming out on the Switch. Um, highly anticipated indie game, uh, mm-hmm. game I've never played. Um, ah, I was going to ask you if you've played it. No, I've not played are it. You in- are you interested in the Switch version? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am actually. Yeah, probably because it's a game I, I have been interested in before. I just not got around to. So it yep. is on my radar. I don't think I'll be jumping there on like day one sort of thing, but I, yeah. I imagine it will end up on my Switch at some point. Uh, and so it's, yeah, it's it's coming out for fourteen ninety nine dollars. Yeah, and um, nice little budget game. It's not good. It is. Of what I hear, it's got like crazy long like longevity. There's so much mm. to do. It's like, okay. Um, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, it does seem to be like a mix between... Well, it, it's essentially... It's a mix between so many things, but it's like Roots are in like Harvest Moon. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a farming game. It's cool. Um, but there's lots of like branching off. Like You, you can go visit Dungeon... Uh, like a cave, I guess, that has enemies inside. But yeah. There's some like, exploration stuff. But, yeah. Cool. yeah. Should, we do a, should we do a super topic? Let's just dive into a super topic. 
stupid topic. Okay, yes. so um, it's been going off two weeks now, the voting for this. Uh, and so two weeks ago, we announced there were two super topics um, up to up for vote, uh, and it was the Nintendo handhelds discussion or the handheld revisions, which is our favourites, uh, and also the best Sega games on Nintendo consoles. And what well, one? What did you vote for? The winner, either way, uh, is <laughs> Nintendo handhelds. Uh, yes, uh, Jonathan Cruz's suggestion uh, one. By a staggering amount. That's this is what it, people it, want to hear. It was pretty one-sided. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so Which is, um, I, I feel I'm fairly well equipped to talk about portables. Um, yeah, I feel I've done that on the on the show a fair bit. I think you're very very well equipped. I think because you own very, uh, you, you've gone through a lot of portables. I've gone through a few. Some of some have stuck through um, with me more than others, and only yeah. the classics remain. Um, but we're talking about Nintendo. <laughs> um, so let, let's let's quickly check on our, our history here on Nintendo handhelds. Um, so, what handheld systems have you owned, Nintendo ones? Now, owned is an interesting way of putting it. I've got two older brothers, so oh, okay. Or do you use? Generally, what they own, I, I played on. So yeah, um, we 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 did have the original Game Boy, but very briefly, uh, I played Tetris on it, and that was about it. Uh, didn't okay. play a whole lot. Uh, the first major Nintendo handheld was the color. We were okay. we were very enamored by the color. <laughs> it's like mm. color, <laughs> you know, incredible. Um, yeah, um, actually, does the color count as a revision? Yeah. Oh, good point. As in, like, is it like a because system? they made there's so many exclusive games for the color. It's like because it was meant to be the next like version of the Game Boy, and it was. But... Well, going by the description of the question, I'm going to say it counts because it is. Um, actually, no, it's not. The Game Boy Light's called out, not the color. Yeah. Um, so I'm guessing the color doesn't count in this. Yeah. Um, um, but if, you know, uh, we're just starting off. We're just talking about what, you know. Background experience yeah. as well. So, but yeah, so you game with color. Well, then we went straight into the advance, the original advance, the old airplane steering wheel advance. Yeah, that was. Um, uh, there wasn't really much in between, though, was there? No, no. I think the color really. had the revisions. They came out quite, sense. quite. Did they come out quite close together? I feel like they did. It was like a yeah, I feel they, well, especially compared to like the original Game Boy, that just went on for <laughs> like ten years or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah they went on for a decade, and then <laughs> the game the color was around for like three years, and then they answered yeah. around for three years. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I did. I did. The game Boy Advance SP was the first handheld I owned. Was the first that was mine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which, which, which one was that? Or oh, the SPs? No, the SP. It was just a standard SP. I the tribal one was there. Oh, all right. I was never a fan of the tribal design. So what did you? That have? was huge. Was it, was, it, was it a silver one? Then you had. It's just a standard silver, yeah, SP. Silver, yeah. okay. But yeah, I don't understand why the tribal design was a huge thing. It's like, oh, it's the greatest design ever. I'm like... I, I had a tribal. I, I, why? <laughs> why? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I, I played the Game Boy Advance version of Max Payne on my tribal Game Boy Advance. <laughs> <laughs> I felt very cool. Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> but... Um, the game was actually quite good. <laughs> Is it? I never played Max Payne on GBA, but it sounds horrendous. It, it's it's almost like um, did you play the uh, the Game Boy Advance version of Tony Hawk's? Yes. Two. With the isometric three. Oh, the isometric. Yeah. yeah. It was like that. So it was like okay. it worked surprisingly well because it ran really smoothly, and it, the, the, the graphics were kind of like that. Oh, okay. uh, but you you had like, bullet time and stuff. stuff. They were, and it was fully voiced. Uh, sounds like a, you know. sounds like a, a technical marvel for the Game Boy Advance. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I um, um. So after after the SP, it was like we went through the motions. We got DS and DS Lite, and, and since then it's been every iteration yeah. up to yeah, the new 3DS XL. Right. So I guess what are options? Um, so let's let's recap. Let's read out the full question again. Okay. So. Which Nintendo handled revision was the best? 
could be any one, or I guess any of them, so long as it's one that's revised on its original design, such right. as the Game Boy Light, which I've never touched. Uh, only released in Japan, I assume, the Game Boy Light? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. You might I think that's just a, 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 I think the, the light is the backlit Game Boy. It is, I yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm guessing that it's probably actually iteration of the Pocket. Yeah. So I assume it's the so. smaller one. I believe so. Um, Maybe. Uh, uh, I haven't seen it. So games shouldn't really be part of decision making. Uh, keep into account which one are perfected on its original the best. Uh, um, and then, I, I think I feel like there's just one. There's one super easy answer. Uh, or the SP. ESP, I feel like, just completely destroys the original Game Boy Advance. Yeah, especially that, that last line, like, what gives the most improvements. So yeah, it yeah. fix... Yeah, so it, um, the big one is it fixes the screen. The screen. So it makes it backlit, <laughs> uh, so you, which means you can play it in more places. Um, it's just, you know, it, the games look better, and yep. they don't look so dull and such. Um so what other improvements did the SP bring? Uh, the battery, I believe, was uh, did that, uh, that was, a, was the SP the first one that had the rechargeable battery? Yeah, a little lithium yeah. battery in there. I assume it was yeah. lithium, but rechargeable either way. Um, I guess um, it was more portable in that sense. It folded up. It folded up. Hit the form factor was a lot nicer. Yeah, yeah the clamshell design. Um, and again, there is I guess one bonus point. Add clamshell design also means it protects the screen. That's true. It did last longer, um, but there is one drawback: the SP got that, that they sort of went back on the shoulder buttons. Oh, the oh, I thought you were going to say about how brave they were. No, 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 just the shoulder buttons. <laughs> I thought <laughs> the shoulder buttons on the SP are not great because they're like little stubs. Whereas yeah. at least on the original Game Boy Advance, they they were like quite large buttons. Mm. Obviously, because of the design, they're like they just shrink them down. But yeah. apart from that, yeah, the SP was it just blew the original yeah. design out of the water. No headphone jack, though. Hmm? No headphone jack. Was there not a headphone jack on no. the SP? No I don't really play games on the sound on anyway, so I didn't really notice. There was a, <laughs> an adapter, I think you could get, which went into the charging port or something. Ah. Uh, um. Yeah, uh, obviously there's the micro. Yeah, the micro is a weird one. Micro is. I, I think that does have a headphone jack, which makes it weirder. Yeah, the micro is <laughs> the. Uh, it's like it's got the metal casing, and it's like tiny. Right? Yeah, I know. It's, like, it's called micro. Uh, I can't, I can't remember. If it's metal. If there's any actual metal, it might just be. Might oh, just it's super shiny. It. <laughs> super shiny plastic. But, um, and it had face plates as well. Yeah, face plates. That's what I remember. Yeah. And a very <laughs> sharp but tiny screen. Yeah, I don't know. I I never I never had a micro. Um, I've always been. I don't know, it looks a bit weird to me. The micro. I was like, why would you want that? It, it's a novelty. The micro. It definitely seems like a novelty. It, it's not a bad novelty nowadays because it's quite cool to have a, like a, a device like that. Yeah. Um, it's like not much bigger than the actual cartridges type things. It looks <laughs> funny putting them in there. Um, but yeah, especially nowadays, I've not played one recently. Mm. Uh, but the screen must appear to get smaller and smaller on that thing. <laughs> the screens never... everywhere get bigger and bigger. You just pick um, it up. And think, God, <laughs> it's the screen. The screen's backlit though. It is backlit. Yes. Right, I was gonna say, yeah, is, yeah. The screen itself is very nice, um, and like the smallest of it, kind of makes it nicer because you know technically, um, it's a sharper image. You know, smaller pixels. That's right. Yeah. Um, but there's certain games where that makes it more challenging. Like, you know, there's a lot of good RPGs. Um, yeah. I, I played a bit of Final Fantasy VI on the micro, and... Oh, jeez. That, that was a struggle. <laughs> trying to read the text, and you're like, I can't. <laughs> there's many isn't. Um, but yeah, it was a cool system. Uh, I'm not sure it was the best. So, on the DS side of things, obviously, we had the, the whole bunch. We had the light, the eye. Yeah. Um, so I wonder if do we can we accept like would the I count as improving upon the original DS? I mm, or is it just an improvement a month before the iteration which came before it? I feel like it's through the light, really. Yeah, so it doesn't share it doesn't, it doesn't share many similar design ideas from the original DS. Um, yeah, I feel I feel the, the DS light was a huge. 
again, a huge improvement. Oh, yeah. Um, um, also, just like uh, as like an identity mm. for a platform, I think that's probably the biggest one, like probably even more than the SP was, despite like the SP looking absolutely completely different to the original Game Boy Advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and like the DS and the DS Lite look, you know, much more similar than those two, but just they look like completely different tiers of product. Yeah, um, absolutely. The original DS looked very basic. It kind of, it was very like this is like a prototype <laughs> kind of mm. design. Whereas, it did have that prototype vibe to it. It did. Whereas the DS like very sleek, you know, the smooth mm. edges, and it just felt good. So I think that's a contender. But I think also, oddly, the um, the three DS XL. Yeah, it is a contender of a really good iteration. Well, are, really you, are you saying the standard XL or the new 3DS XL? Um, uh, it depends how we make how we rule this up. Um, I would say the new because of the Amiibo integration and things like that. Uh, it's handy, and I guess you got the extra performance. Uh, so yeah. this that does make it uh, an interesting choice, actually. Um, it really it's depends got, it's got, it's got, it's where, where we start. I use it. Which it does. I, I never actually used 3D on my new 3 ds so maybe I should try it to see how well not, it works. Not even the test out? How the technology? No, no. I did turn on the, the it, it can detect how much light is in the room, so it adjusts the brightness automatically. That is horrible. Mm. It, yeah, I have to know. It barely works. It's like, oh, I'm playing a game, and now it's gone all black. I can't see a thing. <laughs> it, it thinks that the sun is in my room. You know, I'm like, I can't. Yeah, I think oh, ironically, oh, okay. the biggest problem that has is and i'm not sure it's the same as what you're describing is if you were playing it in a uh a non-lit room itself mm. that it would be setting itself off if there was it's like a it. dark scene yeah, and so yeah. it's not emitting much light it will be like, countering for it with the sensor which is coming <laughs> out oh let's brighten this up <laughs> and of course it's like bright enough and of course it's yeah it's <laughs> and the room bright so it's like oh i better turn it down mm. yeah it's just bad yeah. in itself for them so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put a um, it's not it's not the most imaginative one, but I think there's a good case to be made for the uh, the new free SXL. Um, because okay. also, and, and this is going to be my key example for it, is, um, and it's not exclusively this, but games which are like this. Um, so the uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D release, okay. where you could, it was obviously, it was a fairly new 3DS game. Um, and so, you know, 3D was part of the novelty, exploring that world in 3D. Uh, but it also had gyroscopic gaming. But you couldn't do both. Um, on the new 3DS or the new 3DS XL, you can. Okay. And yeah. so I think that's really cool that they've introduced a new hardware iteration, which has made something po like a game feature possible, which wasn't designed for, yeah. but just works. Right. I, I, I do like that. <laughs> the, the, theoretically, you can do that. Practically, would you want to? Oh, well, I mean, on the new 3DS XL? Yeah. I've done it, but I know it works fine. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, like surprisingly well. Like, oh, it, it's it's still 3D. And oh, I okay. like to aim like this because it's it's really quite snappy, like in Splatoon. Hmm. Um, I've never and, tried the, uh, the the face tracking thing, so I don't know how well it actually like, follows you. Yeah, it, it for like deliberate movements and such. Yeah, it's it's really good. Okay. Um, so that's Contender. So uh, let's, let's see what we've got. So we've got a possible... For a new 3DS, new 3DS, yep, family. Um, so the SP, I, I think that's definitely up there. Uh, it, it, I think that wins outright, to be honest. All right, okay. And then we've also got uh, the DS Lite transforming the DS. Because, like, imagine, like, without the DS Lite, like, would the DS have like done 150? Yeah, because I think the DS Lite was the most sold version of the DS. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I shouldn't they would have done iterations anyway, but I mean that particular one, it obviously resonated with people with the games coming out as well at the same time. That is yeah. the moment when the DS exploded, of course. Um, in the good way. And <laughs> so yeah, uh, so we've got three strong contenders. Mm -hmm. uh, do we need to check in any more? Uh, um... the, the micro's neat. It's a good, it's a good fun gimmick. Yeah, but, but I, I, I can't like hand and heart say, "Oh, the micro is the best version of the Game Boy Advance." It's yeah, cool I can't, device. I can't say that the micro is better than the SP. No way. Um, I uh, or so, the so headphone jack. About the light. I mean, the the light's an interesting one. Um, ironically, it probably is the best system of them 
in terms of that. Like, oh, it's a Game Boy, but it's backlit and it's backlit. like it's thinner and lighter. Um, yeah. It's like, well, what do you want? Yeah, definitely. exactly. Like, but none of us have actually touched one, so it's hard to judge. Sorry, so I would, I would like to play a Game Boy Light one day. Um, because like I never actually owned a Game Boy Pocket, and they, I was always envious of where I saw any like promotion of a Game Boy Pocket. Um, because it was like less than half the you know the thickness of a Game Boy Classic. That's right, yeah. Um, it it essentially looked like a Game Boy Color, you know, before it. That's right. It was still a Game Boy. Um, and I had this big chunky Game Boy for so we got the color. Um, very well used. It's I think it's it. Oh, actually, I know it's it's still. Uh, in very w good working order, um, like most Game Boys are. Yeah, <laughs> those um, things could last forever. Yeah. So, have, have we missed anything out? Revision. We've gone through all Nintendo's major handouts. There's no. Um, I can't think of any. No, we've done all. We covered them all. Have we Game Boy, yeah. Game Boy Advance. Yeah, the only thing we've we kind of covered but not properly is like we mentioned like the dsi yeah. um but as a little thing is that there was also I, dsi I, xl which was dsi because cool. all the time it was massive the, the dsi xl, the XL was huge. exactly was it was like burgundy mm, they were, well, they were like the burgundy version and it's like of all the colors to choose from like they were marketing for a certain demographic very much so that's granddad's favorite color of his chair <laughs> <laughs> you know, color. I mean, like they, the games, like um, like just Brain Age, and even yeah. in some ways, like the Professor Layton games, yeah. like, I can imagine looking quite nice in the big burgundy DS. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, they had a lot of things like that, and you know, the pit crosses. And yeah, all those. Oh, what what all those? Um, um, they're the blue branding in like it was the Wii DS era of Touch Generations. Oh, the... yeah. There was a bunch yeah. of touch generation games, yeah, it was and it was just—it yeah. was kind of like a uh, this game is casual but of good quality stamp. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, so I think it's going to be amongst uh, the SP, the free XL, uh, and the light, uh, and the light. Wait, what well, no, the light? The uh, DS light. Oh, the yes, the yes, like, I've probably done the Game Boy that again. Um, <laughs> interesting, yeah. yeah that's, hmm. I wonder if it was lighter as well. Was it I lighter than the pocket? I wonder if it was like a double. The, like, the double meaning? Maybe. Hmm. Maybe. So, Let's find out. Did, so, uh, are, you, are you fairly confident for yourself it's the, uh, the SP? Oh, for me, without a doubt, it's the SP. Um, it, it, plays because the, it, it, it plays Game Boy Classic games, doesn't it? SP? It does, yeah, absolutely. It, out, but it, it, still, it still has the uh, backwards compatibility. And it, it, it basically just, because the Game Boy Advance, I mean, I, I played the original Game Boy Advance, and it's a struggle to play that system sometimes because you need perfect conditions to play it. Mm. The SP solved that issue. It's like it turned a console that you can only play part time into a console you can play full time. And it's like, that's a huge upgrade, you know. But yeah. Yeah. I think for myself, it's. It... It's probably the one I talked about the least, but I think it's actually the DS Lite. Okay. Just that, because it's that, I think, is a transformation. Like, I feel with the Game Boy Advance, although the SP is functionally so much better than the original, yeah. I don't think it really changed much in terms of the games and the success of the system. No, um, it, it didn't turn it around quite what they hoped. But yeah, I yeah. feel with the Lite, yeah, not, not just uh, was it a nice system, it looked good, it felt good. Um, it, and it came in a variety of colours. True. <laughs> Although I think originally, at least over here, um, there, it was just in black and white, gloss, very glossy. I believe so. And then when Mario Kart came out very soon yeah. after, it's like red. red. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it also reminded me, and I think this was a first. Because it was just definitely this was definitely for the Wii as well. Um, they were going after the almost Apple vibe. Yeah. Um, which we've seen a lot more of. Like, if you compare like the packaging of the system uh, bef to any of the other ones they did before, the DS Lite was very different. Yeah, and that I is mean, they've, they've started. To, they've stayed with since. In and of itself, DSi. I mean, all they've done is Apple will put the i at the beginning to like, oh, we'll stick on the end. It's a DSi. It's like, uh, okay. Yeah. 
That's cool, though. Yeah, that's good. It's a good portable discussion. Um, and it was good focusing as well, just on the iterations. Because uh, I think we've got a very different conversation. Do you we were just like, oh, yeah, what's our favorite? The handheld system. Yeah. Handheld system. Because we would be the grouping of the them up. All right, we've got the, the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Color as well, you know, the DS, the 3DS. Yes. Um, yeah, that would be an interesting discussion. But yeah, this is cool. So yeah, thank you very much, Donovan. Yeah. Uh, and awesome. also just for supporting us in general. And uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel Gaskin, um, I do like your Sigrid Nintendo discussion. I'm sure we'll get around to it at some point. And thank you also for supporting. Uh, anyone out there listening and watching and would like to uh, support as well, chuck in a super topic. And also, don't forget... Oh. Sigrid Nintendo Classic is Next still week. up for grabs. Next week, One folks. week remaining from the time of recording. Um, so... If you want a chance to win that, uh, get your support in and live on the next show. Uh, we will pick a name and yeah, that'll be it. And then you can be relieved it will be the end of the, the big promos at the beginning of the shows. <laughs> or internet. It's more great. Yes. So before we end the show, uh, let's do our usual thing. Um, oh, okay. We'll go around the oh, very, very intimate group here. Um, <laughs> We'll give out uh, how you can get hold of us and anything that we've been up to that we'd like to let you know. Is it Colin? Yes. How can we um, get hold of you? If you get hold of me, uh, mainly through Twitter, although I haven't been on Twitter for a while, actually. Well, uh, for the last like two days. But um, yeah, get hold of me through Twitter. It's at Highly Embarred, which is probably how you think it's spelled. Maybe. Probably not. But uh, it, it's, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, you can find me there. Uh, you can also find me on uh, YouTube. I don't know my. I, uh, no, I haven't got the subscribers for the custom URL, which I desperately want, so I can make oh, this pr process. Uh, I believe you need a, a minimum of a hundred. Uh, how can people best find you? Uh, go to my Twitter page. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you can find my YouTube channel through that. It's There's a link on, the, on your Twitter profile. It's on my profile. Yes. All right. Go there, click it, subscribe, and then we can give out easier links. <laughs> Yes, it makes my, make my life a lot easier, I promise you. But um, yeah, I, I stream every day from uh, 6 p.m. to 8 UK time. So, Actually, you know. what we should also do, this is a bit of um, um, usually what's off the show tool, but w w what we could do, we could simply add uh, your channel to the featured channels on Nintendo Voice. We could be another route to that. find you. I'll, I will do that. That has almost been done. <laughs> so uh, if you want to get hold of myself, uh, again, Twitter is probably the best place. And also, just in general, uh, feel free to reach out to us if you feel uh, there are, you know, if you don't use Twitter, there's other things that you think would make more sense. Do let us know. For now, though, heading over to Twitter, uh, the name you need is Lusion, and that is L-E-U-V-S-I-O-N. And the only thing I do have to plug this week is the final week of the uh, Super Nintendo. So that's patreon.com slash Nintendo Voice. Um, odds are very good so far, so do check it out. And that's it for today's show. So thanks all uh, once again for listening and for watching. And this has been Nintendo Voice. All right. Take care, everyone. <laughs>